if you're watching this on YouTube, go down, hit that subscribe button, click on the little bell. That way you guys will be notified every time we put a new video up, you'll get a notification. So go ahead and do that now. Did you do it? Good. Back again, Mark. Amanda. <laughs> we have to introduce ourselves. Some we're trying to get good at, guys. Anyway, um, shoot, I had another thought. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, go down, hit that subscribe button, click on the little bell. That way, you guys will be notified every time we put a new video up. You'll get a notification. So go ahead and do that now. Did you do it? Good. All right. So this is what part two of our childhood obesity obesity series. This is part two of the childhood part because we kind of ran out of time. We didn't want to bore you guys with one long video. So I mean, what did we kind of end on? We kind of touched on. We touched on childhood obesity beginning in beginning infancy. Of infancy, right? So maybe we should go into some solutions. Problem. Solutions. Solutions. Okay. Or should we go into You just created a whole other video. Whole, whole other video. <laughs> <laughs> we can combine but, it. Okay. I yeah, let's just combine it. Because so so we've gathered that childhood obesity starts at infancy. Um, one in five children in the United States. This isn't are just regional, this right. is in the United States, one in five children are suffering from childhood obesity. Yes, and it's mostly related to non-related to physical illness right correct the, the correct. majority of obesity in childhood in, in the united states period is non non-physical illness there's but all sorts of different things that we can we can blame it on i mean it's, right, we right. all have busy lifestyles we can blame it on the internet we can blame it on social media on cell phones um video game systems, you know, I mean, it's, so, uh, there's so many things to blame it on. Right. If you create, if you start with unhealthy or poor food choices in infancy, that transitions into childhood, which transitions into adolescence. We model for our kids. Right. And I grew up with Mountain Dew, Cheetos, sugar, butter, you know, you just didn't think of it. And... Well, Right. Most of most most fast paced families don't, but it's buying frozen processed meals because we're on the go, because whatever for whatever reason. But most families, the husband and wife, mother, father, have to work. both work. So everybody's busy in the morning. Not right. too many people get up in the morning, you know, early enough to actually fix a good, healthy, hearty breakfast. I mean, we feed our kids cereal here, eat a bowl of cereal or a pop tart, or a pop -tart and old milk you know I mean cereal right. has milk it's just all it's all sugar it's all, and yeah. it, it causes them there's insulin to spike and then within two hours of being at school they're hungry it's not satisfying it's not sustaining them right it's not satiating that that appetite and then what, what happens after school we have after school activities we're busy um, mom and dad work late and instead of going home and cooking we're all tired we're all hungry we, right. we can't wait till we get home so let's go through the drive through and get some fast food and, and those are all contributing factors to absolutely. that but I think with, with adolescence obesity and adolescence again it goes back to what they learn what's learned behavior what we're giving them uh, modeling what, are, what we're giving behavior. them what we're modeling for them um, and it can be prevented because if you create if, if you're giving your baby Mountain Dew in its bottle, which is a huge no-no, if you are watching us and you do that. Don't do it. <laughs> no. Stop it. Don't. Anyway. Um, so it, you're developing a taste for it, right? When when a kid has a taste for, even an adult, if I have a taste for Diet Pepsi, I'm going to want Diet Pepsi. If you don't develop that taste for it you don't know what you're missing you don't know what they're right ignorance missing. is bliss in that respect That's, that goes with sodium intake so salt if you don't salt your foods and your child has no idea what that's like and that's the amounts that we salt doesn't develop a taste for it is it kind of like sex what about 
about sex. Like, if you never had it, you don't know what you're missing. But once you have it, you want to keep having it. Is that unrelated? <laughs> thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. It's like the same thing, though. <laughs> It's like an like an addiction Depends to on, cigarettes or yeah, something. If you've never had a cigarette, then you're not going to get addicted to it. There's a difference between being an addict develop, to sex. I'm not saying addict. Let's not talk about addict. Right. Let's just talk about the sheer pleasure of that Mountain Dew. If they never had Mountain Dew, then they don't know what it tastes like. So they don't know what they're missing. So I just compared it to sex. Like if you've never had sex, then you don't know what you're missing. What well, if it's bad the first time? Then you didn't. Well, know what we didn't. Like, I mean, they they would they don't know that because they've never had sex. Bad the first experience. I'm just probably generalizing. It would be bad forever. Yeah, you're taking the funny out of it. I know it. <laughs> it was funny. Now I got all serious. Now, who's the serious one here? 